Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I made this moonlight scene in Cinema 4D and Redshift. I made this a couple weeks ago and I was really happy with the outcome and I got a few questions on Instagram about how I did this and how I did that. So I thought, you know what, I'll just make a tutorial and run you guys through the project. So hopefully you guys will pick up some tips and tricks along the way. I think it's going to be an exciting one. Before we jump into the video, I do just want to say a massive, massive thank you for all the support on the previous video. It really blew away any expectations that I had, especially after I neglected the channel for so long. So thanks again. You know, all the support really, really does mean a lot. So without further ado, let's jump into this video and show you guys how I made this project. So I think the main thing I want to focus on is, you know, the lighting and the scattering of the grass. So a few of the other elements, such as the rocks and the water, I'm going to kind of fly through, but hopefully you guys will still pick up some things along the way. So starting off with the water, this is my general approach to any kind of water in the majority of the scenes I do. I just get a plane, scale it up way big. Um, and then I have this water material here, which is pretty simple. It's the water preset. Um, but then I have a max on noise here which I've just scaled up on the X axis and shrunk down on the Z axis just to kind of give this rippled effect here. It's the default noise. Obviously these parameters will change depending on the look you're going for and the scale of your scene. Um, but yeah, these are the ones I used for this particular one. I then plug this into a bump map um, and plug this into the bump input. Output to the surface and we have these lovely ripples. Um, you could also achieve this using a displacer but obviously that's going to be a bit more intense because of the amount of polygons you'll need to get a nice effect. Um, so this one is the, the typical approach I use. Uh, I also add a tiny bit of scatter scale. This is just going to help to add a bit of depth to the water and any intersecting objects will kind of be feathered out the deeper you go into the water. This just helps to remove any harsh lines you may get in your scene. Um, you only want to crank it up a tiny bit, otherwise your water is going to look all kind of like uh, blurred and you know it's just not gonna look right so just crank it up a tiny bit it's gonna help to give it a nice feathered look that's the water now onto the landscape um, and how I scattered the grass um, I get a lot of questions about how I scatter grass onto landscapes um, it's quite an easy technique to be honest once you know how to do it um, but yeah I'll run you guys through it anyway so what I'll usually do is you know I've got my landscape set up here just a landscape object I've you know shrunk it down a tiny bit um, played with a seed but nothing too crazy you can see it's it's pretty simple I'll then come up to MoGraph and get a matrix scatter if you don't have this option um, you can just grab a matrix right click go to redshift tags and redshift object and you're gonna get this particles tab and now you have the exact same as if you just got a matrix scatter um, they added that option in the more recent versions of Redshift, so if you haven't updated, it uh, might be worth doing that. It's much easier, just cuts out a few steps for you. Um, so yeah, we've got our matrix. I'm then going to get these grass clumps, which I've imported from Quixel. They're uh, hiding out of view at the moment, but here they are. Um, I'm going to grab those, and what I'll do is go to the Redshift tag of my matrix, go to Particles, you want to change this to custom objects and then you can just select these select your tag and drag and drop this then is just going to scatter all those objects along your chosen surface so in this case is the landscape uh, you can then set the count and set the seed so you could crank this way up I'm only using 10,000 which you know may sound like a lot but really it's not um, this is quite a small scale scene sometimes I'll be into like the hundreds of thousands or millions um, so yeah, this is actually pretty light. Um, but yeah, coming back into the Redshift object, the particles tab, a few settings in here you can play with. Um, the distribution I've set to random doesn't really make too much of a difference in this particular scenario. Um, but say you were scattering, you know, along a cube from left to right, um, and you had these three, it's going to scatter this one, then scatter this one, then scatter this one. Um, and repeat and repeat so you're going to get a lot of um, repetition um, whereas you want it to feel more natural and organic in this scenario so I will change the distribution to random um, instead of sequential which is the default um, you then have the scale multiplier this is really handy I only actually 
noticed that was there recently, but it's going to take your scattered objects, so the grass clumps, and you know, in this case, I've set it to 0 0.5, so it's just going to half the size of all those objects. If I set it to the default of 1, you can see it's doubled the size. doesn't really work with the scale of this scene, so this is really useful just to kind of shrink everything down. Um, and then what I'll go on to is using a random and a plane effector to just add even more randomization to make it feel a bit more natural and organic. So let's talk about those. So we have a random effector. If I disable this, you can see that it really is making a world of difference. This is what the default matrix will look like. Um, and then with our random effector, you know, really helping to just make that feel a lot more natural. So what is it doing? Let's go into the parameter tag, um, or tab even, and we have a position, scale, and rotation enabled. Now, typically I won't enable position uh, because what it's actually doing is it's lifting your objects off your scattering surface. So it's lifting them off the landscape. Um, in this scenario, it worked because, you know, there's so much grass, you can't really tell that some of them are floating essentially. Um, so it works well and it just really helps to break it up along this horizon here. Just makes it feel a lot more um, organic. So yeah, just left these at the default 50, 50, 50. So it's just going to randomize them in those directions by 50 centimeters. Um, we then have the scale set to 0 0.5. Um, so some are going to be 0.5% bigger. Some are going to be 0.5% smaller than their original size. Um, Again, just helping to add some more variation. You can see if I disable that, all these cubes are the same size. So this, again, yeah, just helps to make it feel a bit more natural. Finally, rotation. Uh, this is set to 500 degrees, but realistically, you could set that to 360. Uh, what this is doing, if you just look at the viewport, is spinning them around on the X axis. So again, just helping to add some more randomization. I don't know why I set it to 500, really, if you have it set to 360 should be more than enough. Um, I will just set it back to <laughs> what I had though. Um, we then have 10 degrees on both of these uh, parameters here. So if you just look at the viewport again, you can see this is tilting it on its side and same with this one, tilting it in the other direction. So I just use a tiny, um, tiny amount of randomization on these two, just so some are kind of leaning and some aren't. Again, these are all just to help it feel a bit more organic and natural. I don't know how many times I've said those words, but yeah, you get the gist. <clears throat> Finally, we have this plane effector. If I come into the front viewport, you can see a bit better at what's happening. Um, if I disable this, you can see that some of these grass elements are actually going underneath the water. And you might not be able to tell in the render view currently, but some of them were poking out from the water and I didn't really like the look of it. so. All I've done is grab this plane effector, set the scale to minus one, and then used a linear field, which is really small here. So anything past this bottom line here is going to be completely killed off. Um, and I inverted the remapping because otherwise all the ones above this line get killed. So yeah, just make sure to invert that and you should be good to go. Um, but yeah, that essentially is how I scatter those grass clumps and I use pretty much the same technique across most of my landscape scenes. Um, obviously, I'll use different objects, but the principles are the same. I'll use a matrix scatter, add a random effector to just randomize it a bit. Um, and then sometimes use a plane or a shader effector you could use as well to like kind of um, affect different areas of your scattering. Um, maybe let me know in the comments section down below if you want me to do a more in-depth tutorial on how I do scattering, but that basically is the general technique I use. So let's just enable the rock assets in the moon. Not really much for me to talk about in terms of these. Um, the rock assets are from Quixel Mega Scans. I did adjust some of the textures using like color correct, um, just so they kind of all matched each other. Some were really warm, some uh, were quite desaturated. So I did play with those ever so slightly. This one I used a color layer just to inject a bit of warmth um, by multiplying the texture on top. Um, so yeah. Not really much going on there. A few little tweaks to the materials, but nothing serious. Um, the moon texture is actually from the NASA website. So they have a CGI moon kit, super, super high res if you want to. I think I just downloaded the 2K version, but they have the color texture and the displacement. I'm pretty sure this is where everyone uses their moon textures from. 
Um, but yeah, just plug this into the emission color. Um, this allows us to basically just get the texture without lighting really affecting it. Um, I've got very low reflection, but to be honest, it's not making any difference. So you could turn that off if you really wanted to. Um, and then I've plugged the displacement into the displacement node and then into the displacement on the output. Um, and that pretty much is that. So I suppose the main thing you're all here for is the lighting. So let's have a little run through that. Um, let's just disable everything. You can see our render is looking beautiful now. Um, but let's just enable the sky and the sun. So this really isn't adding much to the scene um, in terms of lighting. All it's doing is adding this lovely warm backdrop, but it's not actually lighting any of the objects in the scene. Um, that's not because I've excluded it from anything. You can see, you know, that's left at the default. It's just because the sun is so low, it's not actually in the sky to, to project any shadows or lighting. So all I've done is taken the default sky. You can see the rotations are set to zero on H and B axis. Um, but then I've just dragged it down. So it's like a sunset. The sun is below the horizon and we're getting this lovely warm feel. Now there are a few settings I've adjusted to get this look. So let me just run through those. If I just undo it back to the point. Uh, da, da, da. There we go, cool. So let's have a little look through here. So turbidity set to two. Um, I think the default is one, but I'm not entirely sure. Essentially, this is going to um, add more warmth from the sun. So you can see if I crank this up, we're really getting that glow and that warmth come from the sun and it's making the sky very warm, very orange, which, you know, it's quite nice. If you go too far, it's gonna kind of flatten it out, the color, make it quite dull. So there is a fine line to, you know, the way you wanna push it. On the other side, if I go to really low, you know, all the warmth is being zapped out of the sky. The, the sun isn't really outputting much um, and we're getting this quite mellow sky. So for that too, I, I found that that was quite a nice, um, a nice middle ground for the sky, gave me a nice look. Uh, I then decrease the height of the horizon. If I have that set to the default zero, you can see that horizon line is just floating in the middle of the sky, which, you know, obviously isn't the look we want to go for. So I just drag that down ever so slightly so that the line is just below the rocks. Um, and I'm pretty sure everything else is the same. Oh, I added a little bit of a blue shift to the color adjustment. So if I put that at zero, you can see there's a bit more warmth in the sky. I actually wanted to take a tiny bit out. so just made it minus 0 0.05, um, just made it feel a bit more desaturated and I quite liked the look at that. In terms of everything else, um, the sun has a sun disk scale of three, which to be honest, um, I could set to one and it would be absolutely fine. Um, glow intensity, again, I decreased, but all these um, really aren't making too much of a difference because the sun is out of view anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I tweaked those. You could leave those at the default. Um, that is it for the Redshift Sky and Sun. Um, it really is a powerful tool that you can create all sorts of different looks with. Um, I think people were surprised when I said that this was a Redshift Sky and Sun, but yeah, here it is in the flesh. Um, let's go on to the area lights. This is where the majority of the magic happens. So let's go through these one by one. These are adding kind of just subtle lighting just to pump in a bit of detail into these background rocks. And obviously we'll have this nice spotlight in the middle uh, in a minute. But this first area light here um, is just adding a little bit of light on this rock here. Um, I'm using this gradient texture from Grayscale Gorilla just to help feather out the edges and give it a really soft look. Um, the reason for this, like I said, is just to really capture those details of the rock um, because when it's quite dark like this, you're really losing, you're losing that detail. Um, it's also to just add a bit more contrast to the scene, make it feel a bit more dramatic. So yeah, there's that. I've also decreased the spread to 0 0.5 because if I put it up to one, it's a very soft finish. Um, we're even getting some of the light spill into the water, which we don't want. Um, so 0 0.5, you know, we're helping to direct the light a bit more and it just looks a bit better. Uh, area light two, which is our key light, so if I just jump out of the camera quickly, um, I've changed this to a disc and set the spread to 0 0.75. Again, using the same texture. I'm pretty sure I use this throughout all the area lights. Just helps to feather out the edges. Um, you can see if I turn it off, just get rid of it. Just makes it really bright. Um, obviously we could drop the exposure down and we'll probably get a similar look, but 
I just like to know that you know it's been feathered at the edges. Um, this spread is making quite a bit of difference because at the moment we're getting this really nice harsh line here which is almost separating the foreground to the background. If I set the spread to one, you know, we're losing some of that and we're losing some of the contrast um, in this scene, which I think is kind of one of the main elements of it. So just decreasing that down, helping to focus the direction of that light and just, you know, separate these elements. We then have area light three um, and area light four. You can see these are just painting some light into these rocks. Um, the reason for this again, just to capture some more detail of those objects and also just to help add some more interest in the background. Um, also, I imagine the moon would spill a bit of light onto the background, so it feels a bit more <laughs> realistic, I suppose, to have a bit of light in the background here. Um, it felt a bit dark without them. So yeah, again, I mean, this is all just personal preference. It's easy for me to talk it through now and say, you know, put a light here, put a light there, but in actual fact, when I was making this scene, it was a lot of adjustments, moving lights around, seeing what looked good, what worked, what was too bright, what was too dark. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of tweaking in the process. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's not as simple as, you know, I would like, it's not as simple as me knowing where to put the lights. It's a case of playing with it and seeing what worked well for your scene in particular. But that essentially is the whole setup for the scene. I've used a few post effects, um, which I'll quickly run through. Um, photographic exposure is one I always enable. You can see without and with. Um, I typically use this in my outdoor scenes just to brighten them because I find that sometimes, you know, the redshift sky is quite dark. Um, so I just use this to brighten it a little bit. And you can do this using the f-stop, the shutter time. Um, if you know anything about photography, essentially these values are just how much light is let into the sensor of the camera. I think that's correct. Um, and yeah, this is basically just recreating it in CGI. So you can play with these to darken or brighten your scene. Um, by default, it will also allow desaturation. So if I just disable that, we're getting some more vibrancy in the sky, but I actually like to desaturate it ever so slightly. And then you can always pump it back in in Photoshop if you want to. We then have the allowed overexposure. Um, I think by default, this is set to 0 0.1. And you can see this is just going to kind of flatten all the highlights. Um, you're not going to get any areas that are especially blown out. So it kind of just flattens the general look of your image, which is, is quite useful in some scenarios. Um, you can then just pump this detail back in in post-production. Uh, but I do generally increase it just a little bit to like 0 0.3. So we're getting a bit more of a highlight here and on the moon and in the background. Um, and then the rest of these are left at the default. We then have bloom. This is giving us the nice glow around the moon and really making it feel like a light source. Um, we're adding to this furthermore by adding this streak. Um, you can see all the settings here. The threshold's going to adjust how lenient it is in terms of what areas it blows out. Same with the streak. And then obviously you have the intensity that you can play with. Uh, the final effect, which to be honest, doesn't really make a scrap of difference, is this flare. Um, you can see if you just focus your attention on this little area of the rock when I enable and disable it. It's just helping to lift the shadows and I've put the intensity really low but if I crank this up you can see what the real purpose of the flare is. It's going to take the bright areas of your scene and create a flare based on that. Um, but all I've done is just use it just to pump a little bit of lightness into that shadow just so it's not completely black. Um, and that essentially is the scene. Um, it's quite simple, I think, when I talk about it like that. Um, but like I mentioned a minute ago, you know, it's easy for me to talk about it once I've built the scene, but in the actual making of it, um, there's a lot of back and forth in terms of the look I want to go for, um, the positioning of things, the lighting, texturing, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, you already know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button leave a comment in the comment section down below and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, it really does help the algorithm boost my channel out there into the ether. So any support is greatly, greatly appreciated. If there's anything from this video that you would like me to do a deeper dive on, again, drop it in the comment section down below and I'll be more than happy to make a video on that. Um, I think maybe going a bit more in detail about the scattering would be useful, but yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching the video guys and I will catch you in the next one.
All right. Peace.